Have you ever wakened up and wondered, uh, where have I gone? Where have I gone? Uh, that is, where have you yourself gone? Uh, you've lost yourself. You can't find yourself anymore. The person that you've become is some kind of automaton that is governed by the many responsibilities that you have to face in your job or your family or your school. But you yourself seem to have flown. You can't find who you really are anymore. And uh, what we have been sharing on this program over these past months, this is probably about the 187th time we've talked together this year, we've been sharing how many of us in this present life are finding it more and more difficult to remember who we were or what we're really like inside because we've been governed increasingly by the tremendous drives from without for security and for significance and for happiness. And those drives become overwhelming so that many of us have become just little animals. We've discussed how we live on three different levels in this present life, but most of us live virtually alone on the physical level. From time to time, we might uh, delve into the psychological level or what we call the soul, uh, where the mind and emotions and the will operate. But most of us are governed completely by our bodies. That is, we see uh, something nice on a plate in a restaurant, we want it, we reach out our hand and get it, we eat it, it makes our tummy feel comfy, and so we feel happy. And that's about the level we operate on. Many of us are delighted when we see a certain coat that we think will make us look better than everybody else, and so we buy the coat. And that becomes our delight, uh, not only that day, but in uh, future days and weeks. And uh, that continues until we buy something else. But many of us are delighted just by the things that we see and touch and feel and hear. And our life goes no deeper than that. And so we become governed by those things. If the day is bright and the sun is shining, then we're happy. If the day is glowering and the rain is drizzling down, then we're miserable. If somebody speaks brightly to us, we're happy. If somebody smiles at us, we're delighted. If the boss frowns upon us, we're miserable. If the income tax comes back with a refund, we're up in the air with joy. If it comes back with a hideous bill that we didn't expect, we are bears for the rest of that week. Many of us are governed now just by what happens to us. That's why we talk about happiness, because it's so often just what happens to us. It's happy happenings. And uh, if we don't have happy happenings, then we're unhappy. And so our lives are governed by the things that happen to us from outside, or by the attitudes that people take to us, or by the things that people say to us or by the things we manage to obtain or possess, or the things that we lack, or the things that we lose. Think of us when we get a dent in the new car. Think of us when a window is broken in the home. Many of these things can be fixed and repaired uh, very quickly, and many of us have no problem with getting the money to do it, but just the very thought of the thing happening sends us into all kinds of uh, de manic depression. Uh, uh, that we can't control. So many of us are in that position where we have become almost perverted by this preoccupation with what happens to us on the outside, with the circumstances that we're passing through, with the things that we have or have not got, and with the experiences that we have or don't have. Many of us are utterly governed by our drive for security, significance, and happiness, by our preoccupation with the things and the people and the circumstances that provide those or fail to provide them. And so we have, in fact, become perverted. We no longer act from inside as we were meant to, and that's what we have talked about over these months, how we were meant to 
work from the inside out, but we now work from the outside in. And we find, of course, that as we do that, the inside seems to have kind of died on us. And you remember how we discussed that the maker of the world had created us on three levels of life, uh, the physical, that is the body, uh, by which we relate to the world of things and circumstances and people, the soul, which is inside us, it's the Greek word suke, which becomes our word psyche, which becomes psychological, psychological part of us, the mind, emotions, the will. And then inside that again, he made a spirit, the very essence of you. That's your spirit. It's you as you really are. And that's the only place that you can communicate with the maker of the world. But that's the thing that with many of us has died. Long ago, we died inside. Long ago, we lost a sense of who we were. And a few of us actually today know who we are and know inside what we're like. Even those of us who think we do look inside and we see a huge ego a mass of ego that is utterly preoccupied with itself and de and despises everybody else. A massive ego that wants its own way and insists on its own rights and wants what it wants. So even those of us who think we have discovered who we are, when we look in we see a horrible, grotesque monster that is antisocial and is so filled with egotism that it has no time for anyone else. So whether we look in and see nothing or whether we look in and see a grotesque monster, the case is that the situation is that many of us find now that our personalities are utterly perverted and we have become an empty shell, virtually a body that operates in relationship to the material universe and never goes much deeper than that. And of course, our spirits, who we really are, has really disappeared altogether. Now, that's what this man Jesus of Nazareth said would happen. He said, if you keep going the way you're going, uh, regarding the universe as a chance result of a blind evolutionary process with no personal mind governing it at all, then you will f regard yourself as on your own, just on your own, Jack and nobody to look after you. And as a result of that, you will develop a personality that will become not independent, as you hoped it would be, but will become utterly dependent on the world of things and circumstances and people that seem to be able to feed you with what you need. What you really need is love. That's it. Love. Not mushy love. Not sexy love. Just love. You really need love. You need someone who wants the best for you more than he wants the best for himself, even if it costs him to give it to you. You want uh, someone who is willing to give himself to you whatever the cost. Someone who puts you in the place of himself, who wants your welfare more than he wants his own. That's what love is. Uh, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That it means a man regards your life as worth more than his own. And he's willing to lay his own life down so that you will preserve yours. He's putting himself in your place. He's walking in your moccasins. He's putting yourself in your shoes. That's really what you and I were made for. Except that we were made for the love of the most powerful, mighty, significant other in the whole universe. That is our God, our creator. That's why he made you, because he loves you. Yeah, don't turn off. That's why he made you. He loves you. That's why he made you. And that's really what you need. And that love brings with it all the security and the significance and the happiness that you could ever want. But many of us have declared our independence of him and have determined that we will get that kind of security and happiness and that kind of uh, satisfaction from the world of things and people and circumstances. And as a result, we have died inside. We have become not independent. We have become utterly dependent, in fact, slaves to the very jobs that we think we do, slaves to the very people whom we think we govern. And we have, in fact, died inside. And there's nothing there anymore. 
we're just little robots. And, of course, this man Jesus of Nazareth said that uh, it's impossible for you to recreate yourself. You can't. You can't get yourself alive again. Once that inner part of you is dead, it's dead. There is only one that can do anything about it. Let's talk a little about that.